When you think about it, cruising, for as much as we all love it, is actually pretty crazy. Where else do you take an entire resort, put it out on the water, and move the entire damn thing around the Caribbean for a week? It is insane to think about. And because of the unique nature of cruising, there are many things that are done way differently when you're at sea compared to what you'd see on land. And at first glance, some of those things don't seem to make any sense. But when you actually dig into the why behind them, you begin to see there's some real reasons things are the way they are. And it's pretty interesting to see what has to be adjusted in order to make cruising possible. With that in mind, here are seven things that may not make sense on a cruise at first, but actually have some very good reasoning behind them. Let's start with those tiny pools. Head to the pool deck on a sea day and it is going to be packed with people working on their tan. In the pool, it's likely to be packed as well. Not just because it's a popular place to cool off, but because pools on cruise ships are relatively small compared to the number of people on the ship. Resorts in Las Vegas that have thousands of rooms are known for their extravagant and huge swimming pools. On a cruise ship with thousands of cabins, you're going to see much smaller swimming pools. It may seem a little strange, but there are a few good reasons for this. So why are cruise ship pools so small? First, smaller pools mean more space for sunbathing on the pool deck. Look around just about any resort pool, whether it be at sea or at land, and you'll almost always see more people out of the water than in it. Given that many more people seem to want to lay out in the sun than be in the pool at any given time, a smaller pool would actually make some sense. But there is a second part, and it's the physics behind a pool on a cruise ship, and it's likely the big reason that pools are modest in size. Put plainly, water is heavy. A pool that is 20 feet by 40 feet and 5 feet deep, the weight is 250,000 pounds. And because the pool deck obviously needs to be in the sunshine, it has to be at the top of the ship. Putting lots of heavy water high up on the ship could make the ship more unstable in rough water. You can just see how much the pool water moves back and forth when the ship rocks just a little. This is also why pools are in the middle of the deck or they are placed symmetrically on either side of the ship. Having a pool off center with that much weight, it could cause major issues. Now one clever trick that cruise lines use, you'll often find larger areas around the pool where the water is only a few inches deep. This gives more space for people to enjoy the water and makes the pool look bigger without having as much weight for the ship to carry. When you head to your favorite restaurant back home, you get your meal and at the end of the meal you tip accordingly. Have good service and you can leave a nice chunk. If your service is lousy, then you may not leave anything at all. On a cruise ship, it is completely different. First, tips or gratuities as they are known on the cruise ship are automatically applied to your account. It doesn't matter if you've had great service or crummy service, nearly everyone pays the same amount each day. And yes, you can adjust them if you need to. What's weird is that many cruisers opt to prepay the gratuities. Even before they set foot on the ship, they've already paid money that will be given to the crew for their service during the cruise. And if you don't prepay, it's charged daily to your account without you saying a word. Where else do you pay for a tip before you've even had the service? If you're wondering why these gratuities are automatic, it simply makes things easier for everyone. It used to be that at the end of the cruise, you'd put cash tips in envelopes and physically hand them out to the staff on the ship. That was a lot of work. It also meant you had to have cash on hand and inevitably some staff would be forgotten or some passengers simply wouldn't pay. These days, by having everything done automatically, there's no worry about the staff getting stiffed because a passenger ran out of cash or simply forgot to hand out their envelopes. Speaking of cash, another crazy thing is that there is barely any cash on a cruise ship these days. If you want to buy a drink, you scan your card and charge it to your onboard account. Same if you want a souvenir or to eat at a special restaurant or even buy some of the fancy jewelry they sell on the ship. In fact, the only place where you'll really see cash these days, it's in the casino. 
Truth is, having everything put on your card is good for both passengers and crew. It is definitely much more convenient. For passengers, you don't have to worry about carrying cash on ship, dealing with correct change, or soggy money if you head to the pool. You can also track your spending through your onboard account and have a running total of everything you've paid over the course of your trip. It's much easier to get a gauge on what you've spent versus wondering where your cash flew away to. For cruise ships, there are incentives as well. They don't have to worry about tracking cash on board where it could be lost or stolen. As well, there are many studies that show people spend more money when using a credit card than if they paid cash out of pocket. That can mean more revenue for the cruise line. Even though cash isn't widely used on the ship, you still do want to remember to bring some when you sail for use in port and in the casino. If you've taken a cruise before, then it's likely you were caught off guard by all the sales and sales pitches offered on the ship. Shopping on a cruise is big business. In fact, some areas of the ship can look like a shopping mall with store after store selling everything from souvenirs to candy to jewelry to photo equipment. On your cabin door, be prepared for a lot of junk mail. You'll get daily flyers advertising sales in the stores and places like the spa. There will also be announcements and mentions over the loudspeakers on the ship. If you're a first time passenger, it's really weird as it's not what you envision when you think of a cruise. So why do cruise lines have all of these sales in all of these stores? It's all designed to get you to spend more on the ship. You might think that the cruise fare is how the lines make their money, but onboard spending is also huge for the business. In total, onboard spending is equal to about 35 to 45% of what's spent on cruise fare, depending on the cruise line. So for every thousand dollars you spend to take your cruise, you can expect to spend about $350 to $450 on average while on the ship. So by offering lots of sales, cruise lines hope to get you to open your wallet just a little wider and keep that spending up. Now, you head to Las Vegas and every casino is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It is definitely not the same on a cruise ship. In fact, if you head into the casino on a cruise ship during the day, you'll likely find that it is completely empty and the machines aren't even operating. Gambling might be one of the most regulated industries in the world, and that includes on a cruise ship. Cruise ships are often thought of as a small city, and at sea and out of the waters of any country, then there are many things that are allowed that might not be allowed on land. Casino gambling is included among that list. When a ship is in port, it falls under the laws of the country it is visiting. If they don't allow the ship to have the casino open, then it must stay closed. That's why casinos aren't running when a ship is docked. Once the cruise gets out to international waters, however, the casino can come to life legally. But if you're someone who is used to around the clock action when it comes to gambling, it is definitely a bit crazy to see the cruise ship casino shut down during many hours of the day. Cruise ships come in all sizes, but over the past decade or so, the trend has definitely been that bigger is better. From 2015 until today, the average gross tonnage of a new cruise ship from the major cruise lines is 164,000 gross tons, more than twice the size of a ship built during the 1990s. There are many people who prefer the older, smaller ships as they find them calmer and more relaxed than the new mega ships. And anyone can remember the first time that they stood next to a cruise ship for boarding. It is just crazy how large they are. So why would cruise lines continue to make ships bigger and bigger? For one, there are economies of scale with these larger ships. On a very basic level, if you have two ships with 3,000 passengers each, you need two sets of every role, from captain to hotel managers to service the ship. Or you can instead have a single crew on a much larger ship that carries more passengers. This way, it is more efficient. As well, larger ships have more space to offer more amenities, which helps cruise ships stand out from the competition. Gone are the days when it was good enough to simply have a pool and a sun deck on a cruise ship. Today's passengers want things like go-karts, roller coasters, and tons of restaurant options on the ship. 
Bigger ships can simply provide more of everything because they have more space. If you're not a fan of larger ships, there is some good news. It seems like the biggest ships have hit a wall. Royal Caribbean's Oasis class vessels hit the high mark for size and they were first launched more than a decade ago. So while the biggest ships may not be getting larger, more ships are being built bigger than they were a decade or two ago. Finally, one of the craziest things about cruising is how much time you actually spend on the ship. You may not realize it, but when you take a cruise, even if it has several ports of call, you'll spend the vast majority of your time on board. That's because stays and ports of call are relatively short. For example, a ship might dock at 8 a.m. and then leave at 4 p.m. In a 24 hour day, that means only eight hours are actually spent in port. Short port stays have long been a complaint of some cruise passengers who wish there were longer or even overnight stays. In fact, some lines are offering occasional later stays and even overnight docking sometimes. Still, the vast majority of ports mean relatively short stays. The reason? For one, there is scheduling. Busy ports have new ships arriving daily, which means other ships have to leave to make space. Spots like Cozumel or Nassau are popular ports and constantly have a steady stream of ships making a call. But the most simple reason is that ships sail during the evening and night to head to their next port of call. While passengers enjoy dinner and sleep on board the ship, the crew works throughout the night to get across the ocean so that they can dock again the next morning in a new port of call. Reduce that time available for travel and the crews would either have to sail faster or reduce the number of stops on an itinerary to make up for that time. Thanks for watching. Now it is your turn. Do you have something that doesn't make sense to you on a cruise? Let us know in the comments below and we'll see if we can get it answered for you. In the meantime, if you like this video, be sure to check out our channel and subscribe. You can also visit cruisely.com for more on everything cruising.